Update 7.2 accompanies the 6th anniversary and we have 7 new refines to talk about. In part 1, I'll be talking about Sigrun, Norn, New Year's Leith, and Valentian Catria. In the next video, I'll be going over our 2 mythic remixes for Peony and Thrasir. Plus, we have another house leader refine for the OG Dimitri. I'll have this linked in the description and end card when it's ready. First up, we have Sigrun, a Hero Grail Lance Flyer with a decent spread of stats, although she focuses on speed and res. Sigrun got the new Command Lance, and it's got tough competition considering the Arcane Chiang Lance just released. Command Lance has 16 might, and if Sigrun is within 3 spaces of an ally, she gets plus 4 all stats and 40% damage reduction for 1 attack. Really basic, really easy to use. Further refine, if Sigrun has above 25% HP, she gets plus X to all stats, and restores 7 HP after combat. X will be equal to the number of allies within 3 spaces, times 2, plus 4 to that value. Maximum of plus 10 all stats. Command Lance is an incredibly simple weapon, and Sigrun can get plus 14 to all stats, 40% DR, and healing after combat. With the 3 space ally requirement, you do need some teammates nearby so Sigrun can't go super solo. With her relatively balanced stat spread, Sigrun is free to spec into any of the 4 stats as you desire. With plus 14 defense and res and 40% DR, Sigrun can definitely take a hit or two. Her speed will also be pretty decent if you want to play around with that. Leaving with the next reset is Chloe, who has brought Pegasus Flight 4 into the game. Chloe has way more flat stats thanks to her weapon, but Sigrun has been the best heroic grow option for Pegasus Flight if you want to try something different. Fila technically is better, but she is a demo you need to summon. Sigrun will need as much hope stacking flat speed and res, but the new Pegasus Flight 4 does work with Command Lance. Extra tag and demons debuffs and follow up denial is good with her one time damage reduction. This can be useful on either phase, and Sigrun can also borrow distance stands from Chloe. Sure, you do not want to tank an archer, but Sigrun at least has some damage reduction to maybe survive a shot, and the main goal is to fight off mages for the team. Not in the game yet, but I do think Spider-Man's Oath 4 will be the best option for Pegasus Flight. Rain and Hold Devils are good, but you want all the flat speed and res buffs possible. For some other skill options, again, with plus 14 all stats, you have lots of choices for Sigrun's skills, more attack and speed, more defense and res, or any combination. Catch skills are good for Sigrun's 3 space positioning requirement, and Unity skills can work if you're going to be staying in formation. For offense, Flow Near Trace is the best option if you want to double. I would also consider the Attack Near Trace plus Attack Rain, Hold, or C skills. Minus 7 Attack Debuffs just add more bulk to Command Lance's stats. Guard 4 grants more first hit damage reduction, but that may not be as desirable. If you want DR for multiple hits, you could try Speed Smoke 4 for dodge. Attack Smoke 4 would also be good too. For Sacred Seals, Heavy Blade is her only cooldown perk unfortunately. Attack and Res Catch is coming with the new Tempest Trials, but Sigrun can run any stat booster with that 3 space ally range. Overall, Sigrun's standout trait is her higher speed and res, Command Lance doesn't interfere with that, and the DR and healing does work with Chloe's kit of Distant Stance and Pegasus Flight 4. It's a decent refine that is very flexible, but so is the Arcane Chiang. Its Omni Breaker and multiple cooldown perks are very enticing for a flyer like Sigrun. It's tough to beat cooldown reduction effects since specials are so strong in this game. Command Lance does carve a small niche for Sigrun, but Arcane Chiang is definitely a strong option if you want to focus on specials. I feel it's been a while since our last refined for a demo, but it's finally time for Norn. She's a colorless infantry archer and one of the better merch projects due to the jack of all trades balance of stats. Her free to play status has been encroached on a quite a bit with Kiragi and Etie, not to mention Young Innes was great for a good time too. Norn's new weapon is the Volunteer Bow. 14 might, and if Norn has more than 25% HP, she gets plus 4 to all stats. Plus, if the foe is ranged, she inflicts minus 5 attack and speed on them, plus neutralizes any of their field buffs. Norn had the Guard Bow Plus, so Volunteer Bow took some of that identity with that second part. I've seen a lot of Norns with close foil or close counter in general, so this unfortunately is not the best option for those playstyles. But Volunteer Bow has a couple more perks. With the Refine, if Norn is within 3 spaces of an ally, she gets another plus for it all stats, inflicts Guard on the foe, and restores 7 HP after combat. Lots of healing effects in this batch. Against every unit type, Norn's gonna get plus 8 to all stats, Guard, and Healing. However, to get those attack and speed devils and the field buff neutralization, Norn has to fight a ranged enemy. I don't think this makes her a pure ranged foe specialist, but it does sting a bit to not always get those benefits. At the very least, if you want to still run close counter, Volunteer Bow is better than the good old Spendthrift Bow, at least I think so. This weapon is also very easy to use, and that's always a good thing. In general, Norn will continue to be a very flexible archer to build. Plus 8 tall stats, guard and 7 HP healing will work with many skills. Into ranged foes, Norn gets even better. 
If you want to have some fun with healing, you could run Finish 4 or Mystic Boost 4, maybe both. Finish 4 A skills are so solid, although Norin will need some cooldown perks. Times Pulse with a lower cooldown special would be good, and you can also run Special Spiral 4 or Flashing Blade. It will be tough to charge Deadeye, but it's not as bad as with the various infantry cooldown skills out there. Regarding Mystic Boost 4, minus 5 attack deals, 10 HP healing after combat, and you completely shut down healers plus ignore adaptive damage. May be worth considering if 2023 becomes a comeback year for healers. Against them, Norn's gonna inflict minus 10 attack, gain plus 8 Davidson res, and she completely disables Wrathful and Dazzling Staff. On a similar vein, if you do go for a more defensive ranged focus build, Norn can run things like Unity A skills to deal with debuffs, and skills like Tempo or Attack Smoke 4 can be extra annoying. Ideally, you back her up with something like a near save army unit. Switching gears, even if Volunteer Bow may not fully work into distant counter threats, Norn can run offensive skills. Remote Sparrow gives damage reduction, and No Fall Up is a great skill for Norn to shut down slower units. You can then run Deadeye or Special Sparrow forward to pierce DR. If you don't need Times Pulse, Tank Speed Oath 4 or a Menace Hisco can be good to get some of that player phase threat. Overall, I think Norn got a decent weapon which fits her jack of all trades utility. With infantry skills, you can stack healing effects or combine guard with no special charge to mess with specials. Lots of cooldown options available and two DR piercing methods, plus Norn can go offensive with no follow. Volunteer Bow isn't bad, but I'm sure some may still run something like the White Cap Bow or the eventual Arcane Bow. Nothing super crazy, just a solid weapon for a demo. Our season of refine for this month goes to Nier's Leith. I think her banner was our first beast seasonal units, and since beast units all have unique weapons, we have a lot more seasonal beast refines coming. Nier's Leith is a green beast cavalier with a big focus on speed. Her refine doubles down on that aspect. Guardian Fang did not lose any of its old effects. It grants plus 3 speed, and if Leith outspeeds the foe, she deals true damage equal to 70% of that difference, maxing at plus 7 true damage. In addition, Leith has 40% dodge damage reduction. New to the base effect is if Leith initiates or is solo, she gets plus 5 attack and speed during combat. Further refined, Leith gains Phantom Speed 3, aka she gets a bonus 10 speed only for the purpose of speed comparing skills. At start of combat, if she has more than 25% HP, Leith gets another plus 5 attack and speed and no follow up 3. Really simple upgrades for Nier's Leith. Plus 10 attack and speed, full no follow up effects, and Phantom Speed to compete with the even the fastest units out there. Considering Close Call 4 added a weaker Phantom Speed effect, this is a good effect to have just in case. As for no follow up, Leith really wanted the offensive part to double anyone slower. When transformed, she also prevented a follow up, but now any quicker pull skill just doesn't work regardless. It also is useful for enemy phase since Leith can prevent free follow up skills, and with her dodge damage reduction, she should survive most enemies that only hit once. That being said, Leith is squishy if dodge does not work. She gets no extra defensive perks outside the Cavalry Beast transformation bonus of minus 4 attack. Don't expect you to fight too often if you aren't bringing healing. In general, good or fine if you want to compete in full on speed battles. Plus than attack and speed and phantom speed should get dodge active and Leith should get the 7 true damage often as well. With no follow up she doubles anything slower and if they live you got dodge damage reduction and Leith should only take one hit back. Not the most complicated weapon and like most beast cavaliers nears Leith really just wants to be on the attack. The new beast near trace would be great to ensure Leith is transformed and we get Kanto. Unfortunately, Nier's Elm is gone, so unless you already have him, who knows when that skill is coming back. You can settle for other near trace skills since beast cavaliers aren't super super dependent on transforming. It is ideal though. To complete this build, attack and speed catch or clash 4 are obvious picks. Clash, I feel is better to ignore debuffs. For the C skill, you can go with Speed Smoke 4 to stack dodge effects like a Leer. Ideally, Speed Smoke 4 can debuff, then Leith can reposition with Kanto to not be in range of so many enemies. There are some other alternatives for this basic type of offensive build. Leith already has Attack and Speed Solo 3 and Low Speed and Defense 3. Those are perfectly fine with the new Guardian Fang Refine. Desperation works good with no follow up, and Leith can run Rouse Self Buffs or something like Attack and Speed Menace. While dodge is great, Leith may get knocked a bit low. Surge Sparrow would be nice to sustain for more battles, but it's player phase only and Leith doesn't have many cooldown options. Like many beast camps, you really only got Heavy Blade, otherwise you need an outside source. For Sacred Seals, obviously more attack and speed is great, you can go with catch or solo skills and maybe consider guard to prevent a quick charging bonfire. Overall, New Year's Leith is going to keep doing what she already did, but now with more damage and more speed. Phantom Speed is pretty nice, and no follow up is fantastic to double and not get doubled back. Always good with dodge damage reduction. If we get more beast only skills, you can watch out for those, but currently only beast near trace really suits this lead. 
Not a bad refine, but she still has some weaknesses you need to be careful of. The last refine we'll talk about for this part is Valentian Catria's Astro Blade. This Catria is a sword flyer with a focus on huge damage output utilizing Astro Blade's true damage perk. It did get an upgrade, but keeps its old effect too. 16 might, plus 3 attack, and if Catra has higher attack than the foe's defense, she does true damage equal to 50% of her attack minus the foe's defense. This does include in combat stat boost, and the refine plays hard into this effect. New for the weapon is if Catra initiates or is within 2 spaces of an ally, she gets plus 4 to all stats in combat. For the refine, Catra gets 2 space warping, which is super strong to get into position. If she has 125% HP, she gets another plus 4 to all stats and additional attack while inflicting defense debuffs on the foe in combat. The value of these attack buffs and defense debuffs are equal to the number of spaces from the start to end position of whoever initiated combat times 2, max of 8 for moving 4 spaces. If Catra is 2 spaces from an ally, then warps 2 spaces ahead of them, she meets the full 4 space requirement to get 8 extra attack and inflict minus 8 defense on the foe. This is on top of plus 8 to all stats, meaning altogether, Catra potentially can gain plus 16 attack and inflict minus 8 defense. 24 extra damage potentially just there, and that makes the original effect of the weapon even better. Astro Blade can easily one-shot anything without high defense, and Catra has 2 space warping to get into that attack range. You really need to watch out where you place your squishy units. In addition, Catra gets bonus speed, defense, and res to just generally be a better unit. Another pretty basic refine, but this one is very scary. Catra's game plan is still very simple. Warp in from tricky places while stacking a ton of attack. Attack Clash 4 works similarly to the Refine, and Catra can meet the 4 space movement thanks to her warping ability. Even if you only move 2 spaces, that's still 12 extra attack and minus 4 defense. With Attack and Speed Clash 4, she also neutralizes Attack and Speed Debos, which can basically replace her innate Attack and Speed Bond 4. To improve this setup, Seal Defense 4 would be nasty. Another minus 11 defense will be devastating, and you can stack more Demos with Attack and Defense Rain or Hold in the C slot. If you are not careful, Catria can deal a lot of burst in that one hit. For some other skills, this refine works nicely if you prefer a distant counter and or vantage build, better one-shot potential, and you have extra defense res to take hits. For the B slot, Wings of Mercy could be fun to just extend Catra's attack range wherever, but you could also go for Near Trace or Flow Guard. Flow Near Trace, best of both worlds. Flow skills are good if one hit isn't enough and you just care about total damage output. While Attack and Defense Rain is consistent, you could also use Attack and Defense Menace for larger stat advantages. In the Sacred Soul slot, the highest attack booster is Blade Session, but you can go with the simple Death Blow or Attack and Defense Catch. Heavy Blade is great, and any special only adds to Catra's burst potential. I'm fairly certain Astro Blade affects AoE specials, so if you can charge that up, then oh boy. Sadly, the major issue for Catra is damage reduction. She has no way to pierce DR, and who knows when she'll get access to a method. This is one reason something like Flow Guard or Flow Near Trace may be better than Seal Defense 4, since that second hit might not be getting reduced, which can then secure your kill. Banking on pure one-shot KOs is risky, especially without damage reduction piercing of some kind. If flyers do get a way to do it though in the future, then watch out. Overall, Valentin Catra gets a sizable amount of extra damage from this refine since that's basically her entire niche. There are some very fun new skills to try like Clash 4 or Seal Defense 4, but it might not hurt to go for a safer two-shot approach. As a defense unit, Catra can be a nasty flyer with her two-space warp. That effect is always dangerous, more so when the user has very high burst potential. That'll wrap it up for part 1 of the update 7.2 new refines. What do you think about these refines, and do you have any builds planned for these units? Coming shortly will be part 2 featuring Peony, Thrasir, and Dimitri. That should be out within the day, so thank you for watching, and I will see you very soon.